Let's talk about what the responsibility of this handler function is, because that's critical. The handler function is at the app layer. And we said that the app layer's job is to receive external input, validate that input, call into the business layer, and then send that response back out if it's okay. But I don't want the handler dealing with error handling. I'd rather push the error handling back into the business layer if I could, or somewhere outside of the handler for consistency. Why am I saying that? You know, one time I was working with a, a web API that was supposed to return JSON and it started returning XML. One time I had to build a front end tool against a web API and every single call had a different data model for the error. This was a nightmare situation for me. There was no consistency in anything related to these APIs. Plus, I want a little bit of logging that goes on when we're, when we're doing something. If I rely on developers to add logging into these handlers, it's gonna be missed or it's gonna be different. And so what I wanna do is try to find a way engineering wise to make sure that anybody who's writing a handler only has to do the pieces that are very specific to that handler and have a way of all the other stuff like logging, error handling, metrics, panics, authentication, all these other things be taken care of in a consistent way behind the scenes. Now, out of the box, this handler function doesn't really support that. Why? Because it's at the outermost layer of our function call. What we really need, what we really need, or let's just say what I want, is I would like this handler function to be able to return an error. I would love it to not have to process errors, but return an error back to something. I would also love the first parameter to be a context and to get it out of the request immediately and to keep this sort of go idiom that I think is a really, really good idiom. Remember that they added context back in version 1.8 of Go. So they had to integrate context into the request concrete type and the API feels a little clumsy when you're working with it. If we could get the context out super clean, uh, early, then we can have a more idiomatic sort of handler function. I think if, if there was ever a Go 2.0 or the context was part of Go 1.0, this is what your handler functions would have looked like, like this. But I want that anyway. This is what I need. This is the real problem. Look, let me just diagram it for you so you can understand what the problem is. Remember what we have here. I've got this Go routine that started the mux. Now when we bind that route like hack, Think of that circle as the function hack. So if somebody comes in over the wire and says, I want to run hack, the muck sees that route and then calls this function. That's what we have right now. Here's the problem. If I were to return an error, who am I returning the error back to at this point? I'd be returning the error back to the mucks. It has no idea how to process that error. It's not even its job. So this is the problem. The problem is, is that our hack function is this most outer layer function, which is connected directly to the MUX. If we want to be able to return errors to something, we have to change the model. So there is at least other functions that get called before hack. In other words, I need hack in the middle of this situation, not at the outer layer. 
If I could find a way to move the hack function in the middle, then I could find a way to wrap more functions around it. Then what the mux is doing is essentially making a call to this most outer layer function, eventually passing through hack and coming back, which now means that if hack returns an error, this could handle the error. This could handle logging. This can handle whatever. I need a little bit of infrastructure to make sure that hack isn't at the most outer layer of the with the mux, but ends up being in the center of everything. Now we can do this if we write our own mux for sure. But how many people want to write their own mux? I don't want to write my own mux. Not at all. So instead of writing a new mux, I think what we should do is try to steal the HTTP tree mux, steal as much of its functionality as possible and tweak it just a little bit so we can get to this. If we can get to this, we have complete control over everything we wanna do here. And we can end up with handler functions that look like this. Okay, so how do we go about doing that? Well, we're gonna come into our foundation layer and we're gonna add a new package that I'm gonna call web. And the web package is going to give us the tiniest little web framework you've ever seen. It just has to be tiny because we're not writing a new web framework or mux, we're stealing one. Let's break that down. So under foundation web, we're gonna have our web.go. And one of the first things that I want you to see, one of the first things I'm gonna add right now, where we need it, all right, is this. What I'm gonna say is the app, actually, let's do it this way to start. This is even cooler. What I wanna do is define this type named app and what I'm going to do is embed the mux inside of it, a pointer to the mux, because that's how it gets constructed. By embedding the mux in the app, that means the app is everything a mux is. Its entire API becomes, right, promotes up to app. This is how we steal the mux. This embedding is us stealing. And then we can extend and add to it. So, just this alone, we can do some interesting things here. Look, let's create our new function, all right? Let's create our new function. And all the new function has to do is construct, let's do it this way. So what do we do? Because this is in a web package, I'm not calling this new, I'm calling it new app. Because we're not returning a web, we're returning an app. If I wanted that type on line 12 to be web, this function would just be new. That's sort of the idiom. Define a type named after the package and then you can have a factory function like new. I didn't like the idea of this being called web because it's more of the web app. So I defined that type as app, I call this new app. But notice we're constructing this app, and because we're embedding the context mux here, watch what we can do just with this little bit of code, just like this, all right? Let's go back to um, V1. Instead of constructing a mux here, a tree mux, we can construct a new app. I'm gonna call this app which eventually we have to make some changes for that as well. But now what we do is return a web.app. Now new app needs the shutdown channel, at least that's where we're starting. So we get that there. So now by constructing a web new app, we've sort of hidden the implementation of the mux we're using. This will let us later on rip out tree mux and you can use it 
the standard library mux later on because we're going to create this abstraction. Notice we're not creating an abstraction through an interface. We're creating an abstraction through a concrete type. I can't stress that enough. You will see me throughout this code base create abstractions not through interfaces, but through concrete types. Don't need interfaces most of the time. You don't. And the embedding is giving us that. App is a concrete type. Okay, so let's go back. Now, our route adder interface that we added, right? It can't take that mux anymore. It's got to take a web app. Now the interface has to take a web app because it's the web app that now is everything the mux is. Okay, that's sort of cool. Now we've got to implement that again, right? So we're going to change this now. Our imports are all clean because everything's going down. And this is the beautiful part. Notice no errors there. A web app is now everything a context mux is because of the embedding. We just stole the entire mux with one line of code, which was the embedding of that type. And now main can construct the routes. The routes can call the hack group routes with the web app. The web app can call handle because it got it for free through the embedding of this. We're on our way now on being able to take the existing mux and make this work. In fact, if I push this code up to you now, and once you get it, if we do another dev update, everything should work exactly the way it did. Our web app, our app type, is now 100% the mux through that promotion of the embedding. Make dev update. Make curl. Boom. Still works just like before. Nothing's changed. All we did is added at this point a concrete type named app with the embedding, promoted the entire Mux, Mux's API. App is now a Mux. Now we can customize the Mux to be what we want it to be. Does everybody see the code change that we did and how powerful that embedding can be? And what we've done now is we're using a concrete type that's part of this project under foundation. And we're not necessarily leaking the mux that we're using. Now we could replace this mux with any mux you want. And it doesn't break anything above as long as we maintain the same APIs here.